hello, this is Fear Dragon here to bring you another StarCraft 2 netcast. Today we have a Terran vs Protoss, this is going to be a best of 3 series, so let's jump into this already. Up here in the top right hand corner of Daybreak, we have the one, the only, the Korean name player who for once, you guys won't know who I'm talking about before I introduce him, his name is... MVP Genius! MVP Genius, a very well-known CODAS player, but his opponent also a very well-known breakout CODAS player, spawning in the bottom left-hand corner as the Red Terran player. He has been doing very well as of recently, but let's see if his TVP is up to par with one of the biggest CODAS geniuses of the world. This Terran player's name is... Liquid Teja! Liquid Teja actually used to be a part of Team Slayers, did end up moving to Team Liquid and has now been doing very very well. Team Liquid often priding themselves on building up the confidence of players who might actually just have some nerve issues or you know other various kinds of issues and really just taking them to the next level. And definitely we have been seeing some improved performance from Teja so we'll end up seeing whether or not he's able to take on the big bad MVP Genius, he's definitely going to be a little bit of an underdog in this, although I do have to say MVP Genius kind of underperforming a little bit as of the re recent GSL seasons. I don't want to give too much support to any of you who are still catching up on GSL, but let's just say MVP Genius in the past maybe a couple seasons has not been doing quite as well as he did in some of the previous seasons where he really took it to the end game of Codex. But still, one of the best cross players on the face of the earth. We are going to be seeing him open up with a pretty normal looking opening, just throwing down the Cybernex port, getting that gas funding. Meanwhile, we do see from Liquid Tejo that Tech Lab actually finishing up, so we might be seeing some kind of early aggression. We do see that uh, MVP Genius scouts this out immediately, he does know exactly what's going on, saw that there was that one gas geyser as well. So. We might actually be seeing it. There it is, that Reaper opening that is going to allow Teja to get a little bit of early scouting information. The Reaper is not often used, not the, not the most used unit in the game, but Reaper expands very, very solid as it will allow you to get down that expansion while at the same time be able to get out some really nice scouting information, seeing if your opponent also expanded or if they instead went for some kind of big three gate robo aggression or any of that kind of stuff. It definitely helps you prepare for a lot of those situations and also might even give you a little bit of a hint on whether or not your opponent, your Protoss player opponent, is going to be going for that Citadel, or sorry, the Twilight Council. God, I keep calling it Citadel of the Dew. Um, but the Twilight Council or the robotic facilities. And that will definitely determine whether or not you're going to be seeing a lot of that high Templar tech coming out, or whether you're going to be seeing that Colossus tech coming out. And you know, this Reaper is going to go ahead and tag the zone and watch out. In on this map, I actually am not a huge fan of Reaper expands, just because the, the area where the Reaper can actually move into the main is relatively small. We can even see that the Stalker can easily just move as soon as it sees that Reaper right around over here. And there is that a very, very high level Codex play of uh, MVP Genius, even kind of just checking around, making sure, hey, I'm going to position up in case my opponent decides to send that Reaper in. But, the Pager just kind of chilling over here until he gets out a couple of Marines, it looks like he can move across the map. We're going to end up seeing what he decides to do, but for now, we are going to be seeing that expansion already up for Liquid Tage. He's going to be going for that big economic game. Now that these players are really good, doing much of an all-in at this point, MVP Genius is going to have his expansion up in just a little bit. So we'll end up seeing what tech comes around from the player. We do see three barracks, very standard to see out of a Terran player off of that one Rax expansion. And especially those Reaper expands. And though we do see actually two reactors coming around that is going to allow them to bring a very large number of those Marines. In the meanwhile, we will be able to get that stim and soon afterwards combat shield to do a little bit of good aggression. But we do see that Reaper racking up a couple of kills. There is one kill. A nice force field being thrown down, but not quite nice enough. The Reaper does actually end up escaping. Does get taken out by a Stalker? Or was it a Stalker? Or was it a 
Hunter killed in that CD. I actually think that a probe got that kill, so it's nice that it's for that probe. He's definitely going to be promoted to a zealot one day. Um, I'm actually not sure exactly how that works. I guess probes are just robotic things. They might install the uh, probe's AI into a Colossus. That would def That's a huge upgrade. So that probe will be very happy. But in the meanwhile, this observer is going to go ahead and get a nice little scout off on exactly what MVP, or sorry, uh, what Liquitaja is up to. And we can see over here, there is that factory going down, so that does mean that MVP Genius has a good idea. Okay, the factory is just kind of finishing up now. That means there are no starports out. That does mean there are, is no real scare of drops for at least another minute or two. So he's gonna feel pretty safe, just getting out this immortal getting out another observer since he did end up getting his last one killed with that very nice scan from Liquitaja. But he's gonna feel safe just kind of chilling over here, building up that sentry count, getting up those immortals that are gonna be useful against the marauders that are not really quite out yet, but we can obviously expect to see in the in the eventual future. And of course a couple additional barracks being thrown down. But in the meanwhile, let's go ahead and take a look at what MVP Genius is really planning. We do see a couple additional gateways just finishing up right now in that robotic facility. We did see immortals coming out of that. But we haven't really seen that robotic space in that. Looks like he's going to be holding off on that for a little bit as he moves actually, wow, actually very far out across the map. And wow, really nice play from MVP Genius. Actually, was moving in with his entire army in this kind of roundabout town. He does not want to cross by these Zelmega Watchtowers. But. He actually ends up saving himself from being scouted, saving this push from actually being scouted by moving it around, keeping his entire army back except for that one stalker to pick off that one marine. And now we see he's moving out across the map. Now, oh my god, Liquitaja should have wind of this by this point. And it looks like with that knowledge, he's going to just move into the main. He knows that there's nothing over there. So these marines could actually do a good amount of damage. There's only three stalkers, four stalkers to defend. And the pros are now coming out, but at the same time, Liquid Tasia is in trouble as the army of MVP Genius is going to be coming out. He's going to be able to snipe this natural expansion unless there's some kind of repair coming down. Oh no, and it looks like all these guys are going to be power. There's a nice little army over here. But in the meanwhile, that entire marine forest from Liquid Tasia is cleaned up. And now we do see MVP Genius moving in and taking out the refinery. At least he's going to slow down some money, so he's guaranteed damage right over here. We're here to see whether or not MVP and Genius does decide to commit though. And now we see Liquid Tasia's army on the low ground. There is some a beautiful force field. Oh my god! Wonderful force field. Cutting off the entire army from the rest of the city. Don't get picked off. Doing virtually useless. And now we do see the of war are doing some nice security fire down on a couple of marauders. The marauders and the marines are able to clean up all the immortals. And it looks like now Liquid Tanger should be able to clean up with the healing from those men back. And from another stim to pick up one more stalker. So one nice defense from Liquid Tanger does end up actually losing a little bit of mining time on that expansion. But we can see over here in the unit counting station that he's not doing too bad. He is a little bit behind in that work camp, but he does still have those two commands there, and he needs to start calling down a couple of additional mules. So we should be seeing there are those two mules being called down, but at the same time, he did lose quite a few of those SCBs in that engagement. So some nice damage done by MVP Genius. We're going to have to wait and see how MVP Genius decides to follow this up. He does not have a third on the way just quite yet. This Marine actually prepared to slaughter the probe that tries to take this third over here, but will he know? Oh, actually, never mind. Looks like this is not a third, it's just like another clump of units. But uh, MVP Genius is looking like he's not really planning to take third just quite yet. Don't either actually see a Robotics Bay down either, and as this goes into the late game, as this goes into the late game, sorry guys, as the little bit weird, but we're gonna come back to this in a second. But as this goes into the late game, having those lower tier tech units, uh, the stalkers, these zealots, and uh, even the immortals, it's gonna not scale quite as well against the army of Liquid Tasia as he starts getting additional medevacs, getting the building water system, and just getting those upgrades. Um, but in the meanwhile, we do see that there is this factory over here. He's just kind of chilling over here. He says. Hey, I'm, I can be a gateway too. Let me just uh, warp in a Hellion and start harassing him. But hold on, that thought. We do see an engagement over here. Some nice force once again going down. That is code S level force shields coming down for MVP Genius. He's getting a very nice position, but at the same time, this is the case of having a very nice spread out in both the water. So they handle too much by those force at this point in time. It looks like the potato looking to be in a good position to actually take this engagement over here, even take out all the remaining immortals. 
Those level of stalkers are able to do. keep all of those meta decks from trying to make huge ones and actually, wow, MVP Genius realizing the situation he was in, realizing that he just lost his entire army once again, not really deciding to expand, actually ends up throwing out the GG. So very well played from Liquitasia. That's going to put this series in a 1-0 favor of Liquitasia. So go ahead and tune into the next game. Should be coming up if you just tuned into this uh, right as it came out. Should be coming up within the next uh, couple hours. But if it's already out, just go ahead and click on a link uh, somewhere on my. Uh, just go, just watch the vids on vods on my channel. I don't have any ads actually on my channel, so should be really easy to do. You can just go ahead and click on game number two and check that out. But if you like my video in any capacity whatsoever, please subscribe. Follow me on Twitter and Twitch. That's handles Fear Dragon 64. And yeah, I'll see you guys in game number two.